Hey everybody, uh, welcome to uh, today's webinar. I wanted to thank the National Association of Realtors for giving us at Millie an opportunity to talk to all of you realtors who are thinking about becoming military relocation professionals and going through the certification. Um, we want to spend a little bit of time with you today talking about bringing military families home, which is what we do at Millie, and how um, you can think about working with military families as a real, as a real estate professional. Next slide, please. So just a little bit about myself, um, and then I'll tell you a little bit about what we do at Millie. Um, so I'm Ken Robbins. I'm the uh, CEO of Millie. Um, I'm a retired Army officer who spent 20 years on active duty. And my wife, who is also a military um, spouse and a real estate agent, has been for the last several years. Um, her and I moved over 12 times during our 20-year uh, military experience to include uh, three times overseas. And so for those of you probably familiar with, if you're not, the, the term PCS we use, permanent change of station, um, it's kind of a misnomer because you uh, change duty locations every two to three years in the military. So it's, it's hardly anything but permanent. So I wanna to talk to you a little bit today though about our motivations for launching Millie, what Millie is, is all about, and then give you a little bit of a, a, a active service members kind of perspective on working with real estate agents and how I think you all can help as uh, you know, military uh, service members and their families as they're getting ready to go through this permanent change of station process. Um, and then I'm, I'm really excited to also have a couple other members of our team here today, our COO, Kelly Artis, who you'll meet a little bit later, and our Director of Agent Intel, Allison Wisdom, um, who will also talk a little more about what we do and some of our uh, services and programs and things we do at Millie. So some advice to realtors, especially those of you, um, and this is for all realtors, whether you're a veteran or a military spouse. Um, and my first advice, if you are a veteran or military spouse, you know, sometimes we get lulled into a sense of uh, overconfidence because we were in that community and from that you know, background that we believe we kind of know everything there is to know about the military. And here's one thing that I've learned, you know, I've been out now for a few years uh, since, since I began Millie. And one thing I've learned is, you know, Things in the military change pretty rapidly. There's a lot of new things, a lot of new initiatives. And so what we knew to be true even a few years ago may not still be true today. Um, and so sometimes I see, especially with realtors that are veterans and military spouses, kind of leaning on that prior experience. Um, and you really got to make sure you're staying up to date with what is going on, especially with the military community around um, your where you live, um, because things are changing constantly all the time there. So keeping abreast of that is important. Uh, whether you're a veteran or a military spouse and have served, in, and if you're not, that's important as well. So specifically for you all that are, you know, realtors that want to work with the military community but don't have that background, well, how do you begin that process? Well, first of all, I think it's really important to, um, you know, not try to pretend as if you know more about the, the military community than you actually do. Be very straight with folks. Be real, you know, straight talk up front is important for military members. Um, you can respect the fact that folks have had military service or are currently serving. Um, and if you didn't do that, that's fine. You know, that's not necessarily what a military family is looking for. They're looking for somebody who's really competent and good at what they do. So really highlight the fact of what you do as a realtor and how good you are in your community and your neighborhood and why you can be so helpful to a military family that is moving there. Um, that is really important to know. And then learning a little bit about the permanent change of station process and understanding that. And Kelly will talk to you more a little bit later about timelines and how those work for military families. But even basic understanding of that really puts the military family at ease because they you really give them the sense that you understand where they're coming from and what's important to them. Um, and that you're going to be able to help them um, with what is a very difficult process, which can be on a very compressed timeline. Um, the second point, you know, I, I talk a lot to realtor communities and to veterans about the VA loan process, and it's probably one of the areas that is mostly misunderstood by a lot of folks in the real estate community. So if you are not familiar with a VA loan as a real estate agent, I really recommend you get as much knowledge and we can help you with that. We have a lot of materials on that, but I really recommend you get as much information as you can about the VA loan process. We've learned that less than 50% of veterans utilize their VA loan benefit, and that is primarily because real estate professionals who don't understand the VA loan talk veterans and military families out of using it because, they're, because of their misunderstanding. And what it does is it, it, it 
it really can hurt a military family that could potentially buy a home when they're not, you know, they're kind of talked out of using the VA loan. So if you're not familiar with it, don't be scared of it. It's a great product. There's all these myths out there that aren't true. We, you know, we won't go into all the details of it today. But the VA loan is very important, especially for active duty military families, because it gives them the opportunity to buy a home in a community that, uh, you know, a typical, you know, kind of peer that's not in the military may not be able to do. So if you are familiar with that loan process, you can be a great service to military members as they're um, getting ready to potentially buy a home in your, in your community when they PCS there. And then the last piece is, and this is really, I think, probably the most critical of everything is, you know, military families are typically only in a community for two to three years. Um, that is the, just the way it is. That's the way the lifestyle is. So when they're looking at buying a home, they absolutely will be leaving in two to three years. So you really have to almost start at the end, not at the beginning. And what I mean by that is you've got to start with a conversation with them about what they're going to do with the home in two to three years when they PCS to a new duty station. Or are they going to try to resell it? Is this a market in which you can kind of sell a home after two to three years and expect to make your money back? Typically, that's not the case, as most of you know, in most markets. So therefore, what does the rental market look like in this neighborhood? Is this a place where I can rent my home and, and get a high enough value for it that it really makes sense for me to purchase and then hold on to that property after I leave and then use it as a rental property? Um, it's really important to have those conversations up front so that you really understand what their long-term goals are with this. Are they keeping this home long-term for equity? Is this just a temporary thing? You want to get rid of it within two to three years? You can then really help shape their buying process in terms of where they should be looking at, price points, et cetera. Uh, and you're really going to set them up really well for the future, which is going to come within a few years. Um, and so that's really critical, I think. Um, and it's something that I know a lot of real estate agents maybe don't do up front because you're, you're not assuming your clients are going to necessarily be turning that home over in such a quick manner. Um, so these are just a few things. So what I'd like to do now is I'm going to transition over to our COO, Kelly, and she's going to talk to you a little bit more about um, some of our different programs. Hey, everyone. My name is Kelly Artis. Um, I am the COO of Millie, and I'm super excited to be chatting with you guys today. Um, I'm going to bring you the military spouse perspective. So I actually do not have a real estate background, but I've bought and sold several homes in different areas. I've also been a military landlord. We've self-managed a couple of properties. Um, so I am, like I said, an Army spouse. I've been married for 13 years almost. Uh, we um, We've completed seven PCS moves to cross country um, in 13 years. So it's, it's a scramble every single time. <laughs> um, like most military spouses, I've had a plethora of employment challenges throughout you know, my adult life. And obviously the PCSing uh, throws a little interesting hurdle in there for us, but I've been adaptive. I've learned to be nimble and resourceful and came across Millie a few years ago out of an actual need. So we were living in Virginia, Northern Virginia. I had a rental property in North Carolina and I had just fired my property manager. <laughs> so I needed someone to let a painter in my house and I couldn't find someone. I had tons of friends in the area that I could have relied on and asked for a favor, but I didn't want to put people out in that way. So I started searching and a friend of mine actually sent me a listing for this thing called Millie Scouts. And I was like, oh my gosh, I need to be a part of this. So from there, I convinced them to give me a job <laughs> um, just because I thought that the entire idea was so innovative and so, um, so creative and it just solved so many problems. So I've been working with Millie uh, pretty much since the beginning, uh, creating content, hosting focus groups with military spouses to develop resources that they actually need and want and are searching for. Uh, and I'll tell you all about that in just a second. Um, I also continue my work in the military family arena as an advisor for the military family advisory network. Uh, it's essentially a group that convenes influencers from all around the military community to elevate issues that military families are facing. Uh, sometimes they go unnoticed and we all sort of have a pulse in different areas and we kind of bring those all to the table. We discuss them, we figure out ways to elevate those problems or those stories and uh, support it through data with surveys and also through programming to um, help them kind of get through what it is that they're facing. So next slide, please. Okay, so what I want to do, and this might seem a little out of place, but I promise there's a reason for this. Um, military spouse support organizations are out there and you may not be aware of them. 
So I know a lot of times when we talk about military clients, you're typically thinking of the service member. Uh, I want to broaden your perspective just a little bit and consider the family as a holistic unit. I also want to stress the importance of understanding or knowing that the military spouse is typically the one driving a lot of the decisions, especially when it comes to where to live. So uh, typically the service member is busy and focused on the mission and training and getting signed into the unit and whatnot. So a lot of the research and the preparation for the move happens before the move, uh, before the orders even are solidified uh, sometimes. So um, there are things that you as an agent could be knowledgeable about and uh, start to kind of recognize resources in your community that you can point military families towards that would be so beneficial and help engender so much trust and like cure, like just grow that relationship with your potential client um, and you'll have a client for life. You will be <laughs> word of mouth referred for life, I guarantee. So some things that you should be aware of and start sort of keeping a pulse on um, are several of these organizations listed here. So Military Family Advisory Network is the board that I am currently serving on. Um, and they actually, part of, one of the main things that they do is their survey. They put it out every two years. Um, the last survey was 2017 that um, they, I think they had over like 7,000 responses from military families. And it actually bubbled up some interesting topics and some key findings. Uh, the military families turning to communities, um, civilian community organizations was a big one. So this is great and good news for you. So these are community organizations that you already know and you're familiar with. Um, you know, think churches and fitness centers and, and affinity groups and things like that. Uh, these are things that military families are looking for. They're trying to replace things that they're leaving. So they already have this, we call it a pattern of life established at a duty station. Before they even arrive at the new duty station, they're already researching and trying to look for ways to fill those um, aspects of their lives back in. So for you to be able to automatically provide some of these organizations to them, and these are probably things that you're doing for your civilian clients, go ahead and do those for your military clients. Not only are we predominantly living off the installation now, but we're also relying a little more heavily on civilian organizations in the community to be able to fill this need of wanting to be a part of the community and not always just being so insulated on the installation. Another thing that I'd like to point out to you guys is that geo-batching is fairly common. And what that means is that often, um, I think they, they found that 43% of their respondents had G chosen to geo batch or live geographically displaced from one another at some point in time in their career. So if a family is kind of anchored and rooted in a community, say they have kids in high school that are about to finish out their senior year, or say the spouse has an amazing job that he or she is not ready to leave or can't convert into a remote opportunity or whatever the case is, Sometimes the families will choose to separate and live in different locations if the service member gets orders to leave. So that could be for, you know, a small amount of time, six months, a year. It could be for longer. It could be for the entire duty station assignment. So if you get a service member or a spouse that comes to you and says, hey, I'm looking at properties, please don't question <laughs> where the rest of the family is. Just go ahead and like understand that that's a reality that some of us face and it's also kind of stigmatized so being empathetic to the fact that that is a choice that some of us are actually faced with um, would be amazing another thing that i want to point out and i'm just going to kind of briefly touch on is uh, military family advisory network or mfan also just released a survey regarding the state of privatized military housing so base housing folks that live on base are struggling right now with a ton of um, issues regarding the quality of the housing and the management. So not to say this is your opportunity to you know, sway them away from living on base, but I want to call your attention to the fact that you may be getting more clients who have traditionally relied on base housing and who have had their trust a little shaken in that institution. So be empathetic to them. Do a little research on, you know, the situation at your local installation if you are near an installation, um, just so that you can kind of speak compassionately to your client or potential client when or if the time comes and they come to you and say, I actually have no idea what I'm going to do because I thought I was going to live on base and now I don't know if I want to do that. So just be aware of it. 
Another great organization is Blue Star Families, and they release a survey um, quite frequently, and it tackles all sorts of military lifestyle topics, and they break it down into military spouse challenges, veteran challenges, and uh, active duty service member challenges. And some of the things that I take away from those surveys, uh, relocation is consistently ranked in one of the top three as far as military life stressors. Um, it also impacts families and service members' decisions to stay in the military or to get out. So again, just approaching every single family that comes to you, having PCS recently or facing a PCS and just being empathetic to all of the stresses that accompany that <laughs> will be great. Um, okay, another thing that they point out is things like availability of childcare, uh, employment for spouses is a huge one. We struggle. Uh, we are typically over-educated, over-educated, or at least educated, highly educated, however you want to quantify that. Uh, typically, we are un- or underemployed. We are underpaid for positions we, that we are overqualified to do, and we typically, it's, it's a struggle. Um, it's a real struggle. It's hard to maintain any sort of like path or career path, and I would also just encourage you to tap into some of that research and some of those struggles. Um, again, so that you can maybe get to know your clients um, a little bit in that, you know, asking the service member and the spouse, okay, well, what is it that you do? Don't just assume that the spouse doesn't work, first of all. Second of all, you know, maybe try to help um, connect them with resources in your area. If it's in a certain industry or if you know of, you know, professional organizations that you could plug that spouse into, uh, those things would be so helpful. And just, again, acknowledging that you know those struggles are real and that they're there, it would just be so amazing for that relationship. Um, family separation is always a thing. You might have families come to you and the service member's deployed and they're looking to buy a house. So, you know, you've got to just, it might feel uneasy or, or you might feel nervous about that, um, but go with it. These these folks are fully competent and able to make decisions on their own. Um, you know, clearly there needs to be communication between the two of them, but uh, just, you know, go with it as the norm. It's kind of our norm. So <laughs> don't balk at it. Um, okay. Another one is the USO military spouse report. They just came out with this last year and this is an awesome report and it kind of deals a little more with um, more of the emotional ramifications and psychological ramifications of the stresses of being um, a part of the military lifestyle, especially from the, the spouse perspective. So some of the top things that, that bubbled up from that report were the fact that we feel like we don't have any agency. So involve that spouse in the decision-making process, especially let's say he or she can't be present. Maybe the service member took leave to do a house hunting trip, but the spouse had to stay back and you know, couldn't get the time off work or has to watch the kids or whatever the case is, do your best, even if the service member doesn't uh, volunteer to maybe Skype him or her in, you know, the service of the spouse in, you be the one to promote that. You be the one to say, hey, let's call in your spouse. Let's all do this together. And then be sure to include the spouse in all of the conversations and decision-making process, even if they're not physically present, because having that little shred of agency and being able to plan for and make decisions is huge. Um, and then again, there's a sense of identity that is often lost and then networks. So once again, we're back to plugging in your families into existing networks. Help them get reestablished as quickly as possible. The last one I'll mention is Hiring Our Heroes. They have a phenomenal military spouse professional network. They have chapters all over the country now, usually affiliated with installations. So if you're near an installation, I would encourage you to attend the meetups. They do usually monthly meetups. That would be a fantastic group to get involved with. They are always looking for mentors and speakers and just professional connections. Um, so that would be one that I would encourage you. It's a, it's a U.S. chamber run organization. So tap into them and check out the work that they're doing. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so we talked a little bit about um, the military spouse perspective, and I'd just like to kind of run you through the process. So I mentioned, you know, the, the feeling of agency is paramount. We take planning to like the next level. So typically whenever there are, we say rumors of orders, the timeline usually goes, you know, service member gets orders, um, a few, you know, months out from the actual move. A lot of the moves happen in the summer, as you guys are probably aware. But we back that timeline all the way up to 
probably January. Um, so right after the holidays is a good time where most folks know, okay, we're probably going to move this year. We're going to PCS this year. They probably have an idea of the top maybe three places that you could potentially move. The military spouse is typically hitting the internet at that time, and they're looking up every possible scenario. They're starting to just like consume everything they can about each of the duty stations. They are asking friends and networks, okay, if, I, if we get to choose, which I'll use that very loosely, but if we get to put in a preference <laughs> for a duty station, they're going to want to go ahead and glean all the pros and cons and all of the things that they're looking for, schools, employment, um, you know, culture, climate, all of these sorts of things. They're going to go ahead and start making lists and decision matrices <laughs> and uh, trying to decide what will be best for their family. So they're going to take that on early. So the earlier you can start to provide those sorts of resources and information and answer those sorts of questions, the better, um, because it's kind of a long-term a long -term strategy. Uh, usually around I don't know, three months out is when you get the actual orders and then things start moving really quickly. Um, to Ken's point earlier, uh, we have kind of insane timelines. So once we know for sure we're headed to a place, we may not have that long to actually sit down and work out details. So we need somebody that can be nimble and work with us on these crazy timelines and maybe not even present in the location. Um, we're kind of also, there's this term or this phrase called embrace the suck. Um, can't stand it, but it is indicative of the, the military culture. And I think some of that may have bled out into the civilian perception of military culture. Um, and I'd love to squash that a little bit. We've been normalized to hardship and challenges, and we just kind of soldier on and do it, but it doesn't have to be that way. So having a professional that we could work with that says, you know what, you deserve the best. Just that one little shift in mentality would be so huge for like, opening up opportunity and possibility that maybe that family doesn't even consider to be possible. Um, most decisions on where to live are heavily influenced. It's not made entirely by the spouse. I've already touched on that, but if you think about it, the spouse is the one, you know, doing the carpools and taking children to karate or, um, you know, looking for work on their own. Everything about the service member is kind of set in stone. That's already concreted. So the only other decisions that we get to make are those that affect the rest of the family. So involve that spouse in all of the conversations. Um, and then the next thing I want to mention is the importance of being online. Uh, we do everything online. We make friends online. We have our social groups online. We do our research online. We spend our lives on the internet and predominantly right now it's Facebook that could change, who knows, but um, you've got to be online and you've got to have virtual solutions. So if you aren't, aren't already tapping into some virtual solutions when it comes to like video conferencing with your clients or potential clients or, you know, doing video tours or virtual tours of homes, things like that. If you aren't, you know, consistently putting out digital content to be able to start, you know, earning trust online, providing resources to your military families coming in, they're not going to find you. So I would just stress the importance of that. It's just kind of, it's the way we live. <laughs> we don't get, we don't have the luxury of kind of getting rooted in one place and learning all the business owners, you know, and all the, the professionals that we want to work for, work with forever and ever. So we're doing it kind of on the fly. Okay, next slide, please. And then, okay, so back to being online. So we're not physically in locations often to be able to sightsee or do house hunting trips. It's kind of a luxury that a lot of military families cannot afford. So what we have done at Millie is created this network of independent contractors who are military spouses, and we call them our Millie Scouts. So they can actually go and scout out properties for other military families. So what that looks like is say I am moving and I'm looking at rentals, but I can't go and check the houses out. I see the listing photos. I, they look okay, but who knows, right? So I can hire a military spouse who's been vetted by Millie to go out and take photos and document things and, um, you know, FaceTime with me through the house to be able to provide information for me to make an informed decision on the property. We 
I think we think our scouts are probably one of the coolest aspects of Millie. They are essentially little micro influencers and subject matter experts on duty stations across the country. And um, they are always standing by ready to help military families. So they are provided flexible, portable work. You know, we've already touched on the military spouse employment challenges. So they're able to work on their own schedules, on their timelines, they're able to help other military families, and they're just doing really great work. So what I wanted to bring to your attention also is that they're not your competition. So they're not licensed professionals. Again, they're independent contractors. They are just objective helpers. They're fact finders, and they are there to gather information to support decisions and just alleviate a little bit of the stress of a PCS for a family. So I would love to encourage you to open your minds at the possibilities here. So I know a lot of times you might be getting rental requests, and a lot of times maybe that's not the best. That's not something you want to focus on. I would love to encourage you to refer out those sorts of requests to our Millie Scouts so they can go out and check out the properties and help, you know, and, and maybe rule out properties. Who knows? They're not, they aren't realtors, so they're not going to try to sway your potential clients or anything or potential leads away from, you know, renting and then convince them to buy. They have no foot in the game whatsoever. If the, the military family decides to rent or not rent the property, they're not property managers. They're literally just paid per task. So think task rabbit uh, for military for military type or relocation tasks. So that's pretty much the gist of the military spouse perspective. Um, I would love to now introduce you to some solutions to some of the problems that I brought up. I know I threw a lot of uh, challenges at you and uh, potential pitfalls and things that we crave and need from working with real estate agents. So to do that, I would love to introduce Allison Wisnum, who is our very own Director of Agent Intel, a veteran herself, and a realtor. Go ahead, take it away, Allison. Thank you, Kelly. So hi, everybody. Um, as the Director of Agent Intel, I work with the Millie crew to advise on topics of interest to agents including the weekly blog content subscription, which agents can share with their military clients. So my goal in this webinar is to translate some of the struggles that Ken and Kelly have shared into actions that you can implement in your business. So as Kelly mentioned, I'm a broker. I'm licensed in Hawaii and Maryland. Um, and selling homes on the island of Oahu is a, a unique challenge. Um, many people are coming from a long distance, common for military folks as well. And with the Pacific Ocean between us, it's difficult and expensive to just pop on over and check things out. Um, and it's a really unfamiliar place to people who grew up on the mainland. So while a lot of people would be thrilled to live there, it's still a comparatively big change. And the stress of moving is amplified. And working with a lot of military families, because all military services have bases on the island of Oahu, um, about 65% of my business is with military and veteran clients. And so that stress of moving um, and, and that amplification has kind of given me a unique view into some of the problems that military families face in their PCS. So I thought I would share with you some of my lessons learned and ideas for how you could adapt your business to work with military clients. Next slide. So from the time that you make contact with a potential client or receive a lead, um, consider your intake interview. And that's a formal term for what is often really an informal process. You, know, you might have a phone call with somebody, you might send an email, um, you may meet in person, you know, or you may have a form that you send to people because you want it to be a really formal process. Um, but consider all of those things intake interviews. Typically as realtors, we're starting with the nuts and bolts, right? The number of bedrooms, the number of bathrooms, do you need a garage, how about a yard? Um, and then we get beyond that to things like commuting and finding a neighborhood and a setting that your clients want. You know, are you looking for the suburbs? Are you looking to live downtown? You know, those things are all the same for military families, of course, but let's dig a little deeper and discover some of the unique questions that we should be asking. Um, first of all, will a family separation restrict your client's availability? You know, like Kelly talked about, someone could be on deployment or, um, they could have work commitments that involve travel, or they could have a, a geobatch experience. So does one party plan to stay back and care for the family for a while? Um, understanding who will be taking the lead on viewing properties, 
who will be dealing with the lender, and who will be available to sign documents are key things that you should learn and plan for upfront. So if only one party will be available, maybe you need to know that you need to line up a mobile notary. Um, or is the right power of attorney in place for your state? Uh, second, are temporary lodging resources needed? You've attracted this client. As Kelly mentioned, they start looking online well in advance of their arrival. Um, and you want them to have breathing room and not feel pressured to make a selection and not feel so pressured by their timeline that they just give up on home ownership and go live on post or take the first rental they see because it's easy. So when you're first connecting in that intake interview with your potential client, you can offer resources for temporary lodging and encourage them to go ahead and make that reservation early. So you're providing value there and you're making their transition easier. You can also, as Kelly mentioned, understand the timeline and work it. You know, how do you work with that timeline um, to get a lot of milestones out of the way even before they arrive? Go ahead and connect them with lenders early and encourage them to get all their documents in order before they start packing up some valuable piece of paper they may need. Um, if they need to refinance the property in order to reinstate their VA loan eligibility, get to work on that before they leave their first duty station. Um, with a budget from the lender, narrowing down neighborhoods can start well in advance. So you can go ahead and set up that property search well ahead of time and even though those properties won't be available when your client arrives, you can at least get them acclimated to the price point in your area. They may be widely different from where they're coming from. Um, and you can get them acclimated to the appearance of local homes. You know, the houses in Seattle look a lot different from the houses, um, you know, in Charleston or whatever. Um, to overcome fear of missing out when they actually do arrive, um, you can you need to prepare to explain why you're not showing them other homes you know so they'll they'll arrive they'll be on a limited timeline and they see that there are tons of possibilities but you as a realtor already know that you've eliminated some of those areas uh, because of budget or they don't fit certain commute needs or whatever um, so be prepared to explain why you've left out certain locations um, overall, just take the lead in showing them how to successfully find an appropriate home in your area. Um, as Ken and Kelly discussed, you know, military families want people who know their stuff that they can rely on and will guide them reliably through this process. So, next slide, please. Using live video, and I emphasize live, is a remarkable tool to build rapport with clients who have not yet arrived. So well before your potential clients have arrived, you can introduce yourself by video. Um, you have an initial lead come in or you make contact with someone, suggest that you just go ahead and do a video call. So um, this way you're already a friendly face, you've already made a personal connection, and when they arrive and meet you in person, they'll already feel like they know you a little bit. And all of this grows trust that you'll need later, much faster than just trading emails back and forth and sending lists of homes. You're also showing your clients that you're making time for them well in advance, even though they can't buy from you that day. So I think that goes a long way to cement trust when it's evident that you're not just after uh, the business that's right in front of you. Um, couples can tour together even when they're apart. So using video is one way couples can tour together um, even though they're maybe not located together. So uh, for example, a service member may have a TDY, temporary duty opportunity, while the spouse stays home. So take the fear of missing out away and give that spouse some agency by including them on every home tour by video. Um, I had a client in this situation where uh, every time we would go to a house, we would just pop Natalie on the video and tour her through it and say, okay, great, you know, and then we'd pop off, we'll meet you at the next one, and, and on and on throughout the day. So this way, they can be a part of the process, and you can get to know the spouse and be an ally for the person who's absent. So when you sit down with the, the, the service member or the spouse who's in front of you, you know, you can say, hey, I remember Natalie said she wanted a really big backyard and that was important for her. 
Um, so you're, you're understanding what both parties need and representing both parties. So uh, going slow to capture the details. Um, I sell a few homes every year entirely by video touring. And I particularly love video touring because I can call attention to so many details that would be overlooked just by the overwhelming feeling of walking into a room. So let me give you a couple of tips for your video tours. The key is to start big and move to the small details. So take live video, if you can, with the person on, on, the, on the phone, um, of the community. Look around the shopping center, look around the restaurants, check out the parks. You know, these all acclimate people to your location without actually having to be there. And doing it live means they can ask questions or they can ask you to turn the camera back or, um, hey, can you, you know, walk over to that? I want to see what that looks like. Um, and after that, move to the neighborhood and take some video of entering the neighborhood, just like you would drive into the neighborhood when you're showing them around. Hey, this is the entrance. Here's the community sign. It's got a pool. Let's go check it out um, and go look at the amenities that are available. And then head on to the street that the home is on. You can give a 360 degree view of the view from the home. What do your neighbor's homes look like? Um, is there street traffic? Is there air traffic? Point out the sounds that you hear. You know, maybe they're not carrying so well on the microphone or, hey, listen to this. You know, I hear a lot of car noise. In the home, say what you're experiencing, right? Verbalize uh, your experience. So you walk in the door and you can smell that it smells like dog, but your client can't. So go ahead and talk about that. Point out the specifics. Zoom in on the floor. Oh, hey, look, this is a hardwood floor, not a vinyl floor. Zoom in on the countertops. Oh, are they um, solid surface? Are they granite? You know, here you go. How do you like this pattern? Um, you can really direct people's attention and be very detailed in a video property tour. And you are taking on the responsibility of experiencing for them. So you have to be sure to point out the positives and negatives and put them in perspective. So, you know, you find a home that has an issue. Mm, you know, I see there's a spot on the ceiling too. Let's look at that. You know, yeah, that's something we'll need to, to have somebody check out. Um, what is consistent with other homes in the neighborhood? Is this an amazing upgrade? Oh, this house has, you know, a hot tub. No other house in this neighborhood I've seen has a hot tub. That's great. Um, so record this video also so they can watch it later and share it with their family members. Um, next slide, please. Share your professional network. Um, as realtors, we have professional networks and we're often used to sharing them with other people. Um, and know that military families will come to you with all kinds of requests. And some of them, as Kelly mentioned, may not be a part of your business model. And that's fine. You may not do rentals. Um, you may not, you know, work with temporary lodging or whatever. Uh, but have resources and point them in the right direction. You know, it doesn't take a lot of time to have a list or make a list of temporary lodging locations. Um, you may not do rentals, but some people are just going to need to rent. Uh, point them to the military um, scouts or the Millie Scouts Network. Uh, for checking things like that out. Um, just have a list and use that list to build goodwill for later. Um, because maybe they'll end up buying or maybe you'll get a referral from helping somebody out. Or at least you'll know that you helped someone who needed it and you represented your profession well. Um, be knowledgeable also about uh, post housing and understand that not everyone is going to fit your business model but you should be able to answer the public's questions related to real estate. Uh, home services vendors. Uh, we often do this anyway for anybody. Uh, you know, we know a landscaper, we know a handyman, we know a local store that carries the countertops they might want to replace. Um, that's no different for military families, but recognize that they're more likely to be entirely new to your community and need more of those kinds of connections. and military realtor referrals. If you're working with military clients, you know your people are moving. So yes, you'd like to have the referral, 
um, and you'd like to refer them to someone who's going to do as great a job as you do. So network with military realtors outside of your area and research them and interview them so you have good people to refer to. And as Ken mentioned, we're always willing to share our Agent Hero network with any realtor um, for no fee. Next slide, please. And as Kelly mentioned, a lot of research around military families shows that they feel disconnected from their communities or have particular pressures around finding work and childcare. So in addition to sharing your professional network, sharing your personal network with a client is inviting someone to your community and making a friend. So you know people in local companies who may be looking for employees, put people in touch. It's not hard to have a list of child care centers in your area to hand somebody when, they, when you know they're struggling with that. Um, for school, you know, realtors often don't want to make a lot of, uh, give a lot of advice on schools, and that's not what I'm implying here. Um, I'm implying that, you know, you may remember the feeling of being the new kid on the first day of school. So recognize that military kids are that kid pretty often. So if you know families who are already at that school, go ahead and ease their transition by introducing them to a buddy family so that they can see a friendly face on the first day of school. Uh, hobbies and social. When I moved to Hawaii, uh, I had to learn, instead of uh, asking people, what do you do? Uh, I had to learn to ask people, what do you like to do? So I advise you in order to get your clients, get to know your clients better, to ask people what they like to do. Um, and then hook them up with people who like the same thing. Uh, I had a client ask me about horseback riding, and I don't know the first thing about horseback riding, but I know someone who does. So I would be happy to connect you, right? Let me connect you. Those are great words you can use. Military families also like to experience new things in new places. You know, you have this opportunity to move somewhere else and experience a completely different lifestyle. So there are a few things that they're excited about uh, when they get there. You know, if you want to try surfing, great, let me connect you. What do you want to try while you're here? So we're spending all this time with these people, driving them around and, and video chatting with them and talking with them, and we have the ability to connect them and solve their problems. And I think that that's re the real meaning of being a real estate rock star, being able to connect people personally. So thank you for joining us today. Ken and Kelly and I have had a great time talking with you all. Uh, we hope that you have learned a lot about military, uh, the military from a service member perspective and a spouse perspective. And I hope that you've found some things that you can implement into your business to uh, work more efficiently with military families. And you're always welcome to visit us at gomilly.com, agenthero-realty.com, and our Agent Intel website, agentintel.gomilly.com. Thank you so much.